I'm not sure if they will or not. Uh, to my knowledge, we have no new evidence at this point to present that would bring about the need to reopen that case. Of course, uh, they are at liberty to do that if they feel that there's a need to do it. But uh, I have no information at this point of additional or new evidence in that case that would uh, bring about the need to reopen, the, reopen it. The man that we're looking for is a black man uh, between 50 and 60 years old. He's five foot six or seven. He weighs 140 to 155 pounds. Uh, and he's real dark. He's wearing uh, dark pants, uh, a light colored shirt, not white though. It could be a light gray or light green. Dallas police working in the case say Cook might have been killed to satisfy a personal grudge. Then again, it might have been an organized gang slaying. During the past few months, detectives said, Cook had bragged ad nauseum about his well-publicized reputation for being tough. As one detective put it, it was the publicity that killed Cook. He really thought he was as tough as his reputation. Martha McIntyre, Channel 8 News on the Move. The transfer of the Texas Research Foundation will give the universities more than 600 acres of choice farmland in Dallas and Collin counties. But officials say the transfer will not interrupt the activities which have been going on here for the past 28 years. During this time, the foundation has gained worldwide recognition for its development of new grasses, which are contributing to the economic growth of the state's cattle industry. Extensive laboratory research has shown the way for new cash crops, sunflowers for example. Advances also have been made in developing new fertilizers especially suited for Texas soil. And the continuation of all this now has been transferred to the University of Texas and to Texas A&M. But the sign out front mentions only Texas A&M. 
and it should, for this is Aggie territory. The Texas land is off over there. But officials say it really doesn't matter that this is one place where the rivalry between the two schools will not be a factor. Jack Hill, Channel 8 News on the move. Anybody that's uh, just planted grass, just planted trees, we want them to maintain life on that lawn or that tree. But uh, we don't want somebody trying to maintain the green in their grass. Because as far as I'm concerned, somebody that has a nice lawn out there, if it dies, it's going to come back next year. We, the council, are primarily are concerned with the 500 or so people that have no water to bathe, no water to cook with. They can't, uh, they can't do anything, can't flush the commode. There's lack of communication is one, you know, the, the, we don't have enough uh, Chicano teachers in the school. The, uh, the counselors uh, are predominantly Anglo and uh, they seem to stray our students or the Chicanos to take vocationals uh, and trades that, that are obsolete like printing, cosmetology for the girls, uh, auto mechanics, which are uh, jobs that are, you know, they're just, they're just obsolete. In 1934, four Southwest Conference football coaches made their debut. One of them, Jimmy Kitts, for Rice, won the championship that year. It is now 38 years later in 1972, and once again, four new Southwest Conference football coaches make their debut. One of them is Big Al Conover from Rice. We're much deeper than we were last year. Um, we uh, Naturally, we, we have a, a youngster at backup quarterback that has never played. So I would say as far as depth, quarterback has to be our problem, even though we have a, our first teamer is an experienced one. Of course, you never know. You know, you can lose him uh, in the first play of the first game. So that that's a problem to us. Uh, we just, uh, you know, I try to live right and uh, keep out of trouble and, and hope that things will go my way and that uh, that quarterback will stay well for me. Let's talk now to some of the players. As Bruce Gadd, the quarterback, goes, so goes the offense. And as Roy Rodrigo Barnes goes, so goes the defense. I feel good about this coming year. It's, uh, as you said, I've had a lot of experience, and I think that's the name of the game. You, you can't, you, you never get over the anxieties of playing, but you can get over the fact of having to think your way through a situation. And, and now it, it's starting to come second nature. I mean, you just start to react instead of think your way through it. And that, and that's, that's the name of the game. How do you feel about your offensive line? Will they be able to protect you? Oh, yeah, I'm sure they will. I, they're one of, part of my favorite people. They're a bunch of guys that are they're just great guys. They're big and they're fast and they're intelligent and they, they know the system as well as I do almost and they know what they have to do and then they get the job done. Rodrigo, do you play your position by instinct or, uh, or by a uh, game plan? How do, how do you feel about going into the game? How do you get yourself psyched up? Those are a lot of questions, but you can just ramble here. <laughs> really, I get psyched up thinking about the money in January. Uh, for his playing the position, it's more or less instinct, instinctive uh, type of play, along with reading. Uh, it's a combination of both. It has to be in order for you to be, for, in order for you to play position correct, because there's no set pattern for any back to run or for any offensive lineman to block. You know, doing game type situation, it changes. You know, so it's more or less those two. As is usually the case, a defensive player might like to play offense. If uh, Big Al called you and said, uh, Rodrigo, we're going to start you on the offensive unit, what would be your position? Well, I want to play quarterback and be the star, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only position I think that would be fit into my character on offense. <laughs> you think Gad might turn around and say, uh, I'd like to play half uh, linebacker? No, I doubt he'd probably make me a hustle for a quarterback, <laughs> more than likely. And that's the story at Rice. This is Jerry Haynes for Channel 8 Sports.
The mustache is back. After years and years of shaved faces dominating the scene, the mustache is gaining in popularity, as testified by the more abundance of lip hair seen on the streets. In earlier years, a mustache or beard stood for the arrival of manhood, and a face without hair was a sign of servility. Men starched their mustaches, sprinkled gold dust in them, waxed them, and curled them, and just about everything imaginable. But the men of today have a tremendous advantage over their forefathers. They don't even have to grow their own. They can buy a mustache in a wide variety of styles. Channel 8's Steve Pontius tried a few on for size, but decided his fiancée would not permit a mustachioed companion. Which reminds me, women represent the main reason many handsome mustaches have been prevented. There are some advantages to buying your own mustache, for example, for men who can't grow their own. For those who can, but the mustache is accepted on their job or in some social circles. And for some men who find that the hair on their face is not exactly the same color as the hair on their head. Another advantage is the price. I was told today that I could buy a mustache like my original pretty cheap. That doesn't sound exactly like a compliment. Jim Green for Channel 8 News on the Move. Okay. Mm -hmm. 